Minasan konnichiwa, this is Tina and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be ranking some Japanese skincare brands. If that sounds like your thing, then please go ahead and channel the Toroku. Shatte krasai. So I have been seeing this ranking tier list thing going on on YouTube and stuff. I'm probably a little bit late on the trend, but I thought I will give it a go. Personally, I saw it on James Walsh's channel. He did like ranking skincare brands in general. He did ranking K-beauty skincare brands. So I thought I would rank some Japanese skincare brands because I personally haven't seen it done yet. And I thought maybe you guys would be interested. Let's get into the ranking. And I think it's funny because like with other um, influencers, they're like cancelled because I'm talking trash about other brands. But Japanese skincare brands or Japanese like beauty in general is so behind on influencer marketing and stuff that I literally don't have contact or anything with any of these brands. So I'm going to be quite truthful because there's nothing for me to lose in this. So <laughs> let's get into it. Yeah. Okay, so here are the categories. I think it's pretty straight forward but top tier of the list is get on my face now brands that i love and i would love to use right the second every day on my face second one is it's good it's really good but there's something about it that i'm kind of like about third is meh it's kind of like neutral it's not amazing it's not bad meh next one is donate or giveaway so they're not brands that are absolutely like trash or really bad it's just that i would probably Choose to use other brands over this particular one that I would donate or give away. Next is Trash. Pretty self-explanatory. And then the last one is Never Used. Because honestly, you can't really say much of a about a brand if you've never used it. So, let's get right on in. So the first brand I got here is Biore. Now I think I have talked about Biore many many times on my channel and I think a few of my holy grail products are from Biore like the Biore UV Skin, Skin Aqua Rich Essence, the Biore Oil Cleanser. I do really like it and I love the fact that Biore in Japan is definitely not really catered to like just young people. I feel like that's like a thing in Western Biore brands. I don't know if it is anymore, but I remember when I was growing up, Biore was like, okay, if you have like pimples or breakouts or oily skin, that's pretty much like what Biore was for. But in Japan, it is from like teens to like elderly, like so many people can use it. And I love how versatile it is. I think you guys can pretty much guess that, yeah, Biore is get on my face now. I don't think there's very many products at all that um, I've used from Biore that I didn't like. Most of the time, I absolutely love it or it is still good that I will continue to use it. So that is a get on my face now and definitely one of the first skincare brands that I started using from Japan and I still love it. Next one is Senka. Hmm, this one's quite interesting. I have definitely done a few videos focusing on Senka in the past. I know my Senka Perfect Whip video is still quite popular and a lot of people um, view that one. I will not say Senka is get on my face now. I think it's either meh or it's good, but there's a couple of videos where I talked about the oil cleanser in this picture here. I honestly didn't really like it. Perfect Whips, I do still like them, but I think I would opt to use other brands now. I do still have a lot of their products. Actually, no, that's a lie. I don't have that many of their products. I like use them and then did not repurchase them and have opted to use other brands. So maybe it's a meh. Are you guys going to hate me? Here. I think over time I have grown kind of what's the word like grown apart from Senka when I was younger I loved it and the cleanser is so good it foams up so much and it like cleanses your face so well but I think now that I'm a bit older and I have like drier skin I don't know if Senka is like the kind of a great brand to go for for me personally this is um Tonyu Isofurabon or Sana um, I think it's called Sana, Sana Nameraka Honpo is like the brand name. But it's the one where they use um, soy milk. It's honestly a myth for me. And I will say I have not used their products in a long time. And I haven't used many of their products. I used a couple like quite a while back like honestly probably like five years ago back and I didn't think it was that great it wasn't bad and of course it's a like really affordable drugstore brand and the ingredients are really good but there's nothing special about the product I've used but 
that was such a long time ago and it was like only one or two products so it's in there but I am definitely wanting to try it again now that I'm older and now that I have like a bit more skincare knowledge. Next, oh, I think we all know this one. This is Hadarable and Hadarable is going straight on my face now. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I used it today. Yep, I used the lotion today. So this is pretty much on my face all the time. <laughs> Anyways, I think you guys have guessed I really do like Hazardable. I haven't used like honestly anywhere near all of their products but I love their toners. Obviously I've done a dedicated video on that one. I like their face cleanser. I haven't used like, I know there's SPFs. I feel like they're not that popular in Japan, but I know a few people have mentioned that their SPF is really good too. And I know a lot of people want to know more about their moisturizers too. So eventually I would like to dive into their moisturizers and all that. But so far, what I've used from Hadalabo, I love. And I think it's one of the very few affordable drugstore brands in Japan that actually formulate um, without ethanol, without fragrance and irritants and stuff like that. It's not that common in Japan and Hadalabo have been doing it for a really long time. So I do trust them and I do absolutely love their products. So they're getting on my face right now. This is Ludurun, the Ludurun mask that I have talked about that much lately, I feel like. I genuinely do really like their masks. So it's going to go in the good section. All the masks that I've tried from them I genuinely have loved and I really do like and really recommend and they have a huge variety of masks and I think that's just like a fun part about it too. They do like limited edition releases depending on the prefecture so you're supposed to get it like as a souvenir when you go to the prefecture and you get the mask and I think the whole concept and everything is awesome so I really do like them but one thing is I tried their moisturizer and did not like it. So I get the impression that they're really good with sheet masks. But other than that, they might not be too strong with like other product departments, if you get what I mean. So it's in this area. Now this one's kind of hard because I've only used this product that is pictured in the picture, the face wash. And for that, I do really like it. I really like this face wash. It helps to kind of clear out any grossness and their cleansing oil and stuff is always high ranking, but I have not used them. So it's good. What I've used is good. I love it, but I haven't used enough to kind of um, make a full opinion on the brand, I guess. So it's going to go right there. Next, we have Kyudeiru, which I have never actually used Kyudeiru. And I um, mentioned this, I think, in a couple minutes, a couple minutes ago a couple videos ago it is a really popular brand in japan because it's made more specifically for people who do have sensitive skin so i think that's awesome i will probably soon be trying to it out i think i am going to get my hands on some and try it out for you guys because i know you guys are interested but as of now i haven't never used it and same with minon Minon I have never used either but same thing really good for sensitive skin but they also have different like ranges for different skin types and I really really want to try it that's why it's on this list I thought I would mention it because I really do want to try both Kyudeiru and Minon and they're really popular in Japan and I think they've both been around for a really long time I think especially Minon I was like looking it up the other day and it's like from the 70s or something like it's been around for a very long time and obviously still very successful oh Oh, this one's so hard. This one is, oh no, <laughs> where should I put it? This is BCL. So BCL, on this picture, they're um, showing their Momopuri range, which is this range like all with, I think, peach water extract or peach extract. They also do Saborino, the face, the sheet mask that I love. I freaking love Saborino. They're like the one minute mask in the morning. Oh, I forgot to do on this morning. I was gonna do it before I got ready. They're like a one minute sheet mask that you're supposed to be able to like pop on and then just start on your skincare, start on your makeup right away. I have mentioned them in the past and I really, really do like them. So I'll probably have to put it here. But the reason why it's not get on my face now is because of Momopuri. I have only used their moisturizer from Momopuri and <laughs> as I've said in the past, I somehow just have really bad luck with moisturizers. And the Momopuri one, I was just not... Not impressed. It smelled nice, I'll say that. It's not like peaches, it smelled really nice. But besides that, it was like 
sticky but not so moisturizing but hydrating but lightweight but not it was just like couldn't make up its mind of what kind of product it wanted to be i guess that's why it's going to be here because i love the sabodino range that bcl do but the more range i have not been impressed so far um i know a lot of people like the toner though so i'll probably eventually try it but for now it's it's just kind of there it's there next we have muji oh this one's so hard too ah uh... You know the reason why it's hard with Muji? Because there's some products that I absolutely love, but it's not that many products. Like, I love the oil cleanser. I love the jojoba oil. The toner is pretty good too. But if you want something super effective and, like, does a lot to your face, it's not the brand because it is super simple. Like, that's the whole point of it. If you want something really simple, nothing fancy, just to kind of keep your skin healthy muji is great but if you want stuff that's like gonna help with hyperpigmentation or problematic skin i don't think muji is necessarily the one to go for but i absolutely love their cleansing oil so ah. i really love like the brand concept and everything how it's just like simple and like everybody can use it no matter what age no matter what gender so like the packaging's really simple and all that and for that reason i'll probably just go with get on my face now the products are really good and i didn't have a product that i like did not like or didn't work if i needed something really simple and like my skin was kind of unstable or whatever i would be completely content with a full like full skincare routine of only muji products so i guess it should get on my face right now the next one is SK2. I'm pretty sure I've never used SK2 from memory. I think maybe when I was younger, my mum, like, let me try a little bit of the cream. And I remember because <laughs> her, her sister, so my aunt, and mum, so my grandma, the three of them shared one pot of moisturizer that I, maybe they got like duty free or something and they all three shared it because we all know sk2 is hella expensive and i really remember that like story or image when i was little that like it's so expensive that three of my relatives or like family had to share one jar and i was like what is this magical like thing it is still something i want to try one day though because i think the sk2 essence is like probably the most iconic skincare product in japanese skincare I don't think it's talked about as much these days because I think skincare has evolved so much and there's so much better technology that other brands have been able to create something similar for probably a cheaper price. But I think one day I just have to like do it before I'm hella old and try the essence and see what all the fuss is about. So it is unfortunately in my never used. This is kind of boring. I'm sorry, you guys. I have like nothing in the donate and the trash because... Uh, because I'm greedy. I'm a greedy person. <laughs> Last brand is Naturia, which you probably guessed it, is going to go on my face right now. I've only ever tried the skin conditioner or the toner, but I absolutely loved it. And a lot of people have been asking me to review the gel, which I will eventually. Um, it's actually supposed to be coming on the way now, but my parcel has been like lost or delayed or whatever. And yeah, I've been waiting on it. So I am planning to review it. Even though I've only tried one product, I really, really liked it. And the thing is, it is so affordable, so cheap for so much. So I think that alone, even if I've only tried one product, is good enough to get on my face right now. That is my tier list and ranking for Japanese skincare products. I hope you enjoyed it. I am sorry that maybe it was quite boring because as I said, there's nothing in these sections. But maybe that just shows that Japanese skincare is pretty good, or at least like what I've tried, and I really do like it. Maybe I should have thrown in some more controversial ones, but that's the thing. <laughs> controversial things don't really happen, I feel like, in the beauty industry in Japan, at least not as much as like the US and that. I don't know. Things just don't really happen. People get the products they like, they use it, and that's kind of it. Let me know if you guys want to see like a different ranking or tier list, maybe a Japanese makeup brands that would be kind of interesting but let me know if you do want to see that or if you're interested in a comment below and i'll see you guys in the next video bye